The Gauls are perhaps Rome's most famous enemy. Of course, they are most famous for serving as the group that Julius Caesar subjugated, an act that would push his already growing reputation into the stratosphere and prove to be the first step towards immortal fame. But many people don't realize that this was not the first time that Rome had fought the Gauls. In fact, the Romans and the Gauls had been fighting for centuries prior to the Gallic Wars that Caesar so famously waged. In fact, the Gauls were probably the first people not native to Italy that Rome ever fought. This is all to say that the Gauls were not only a defining people in the history of Caesar's famous life, but also in the history of Rome's republic, empire, and legacy. So who were the Gauls? How and why did they come into conflict with the Romans? And why did Rome and Gaul continue to fight for centuries following their first conflict? Let's talk about it. Before we get too deep into Gaelic and Roman history, we should first figure out just what a Gaul even was. Gaul is really an overarching term that includes some 60 or so tribes. The Gauls were actually a Celtic people. At the start of the 4th century BCE, which is when Rome and the Gauls really came into contact, the Celtic peoples were divided into three groups. The first were the Celts of mainland Europe who inhabited modern-day France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Central Germany, Austria, parts of Hungary, and had just recently invaded northern Italy. The second grouping were the British Celts. These Celts inhabited the British Isles, including Ireland, as well as a small portion of Austria, left over from the previous migrations. The last group were the Celt Iberians, a group that inhabited most of the Iberian Peninsula and would become an enemy and ally of Rome in later centuries. We will mainly be focusing on the mainland Celts for now. A small portion of this group, located mainly in France, would eventually become the Gauls. Gaelish culture developed across the entirety of the first millennium BCE. While we won't go too deep into this period of history prior to the establishment of what we would call distinctly Gaelish culture, we can essentially trace Gaelish all the way back to the original Indo-Europeans. However, it is extremely hard for us to glean much information about these early Celtic or Gallic peoples. Most of what we know has to come from archaeology and genetic information. What we do know is that the Gauls really began to become a force in Central Europe with the rapid expansion of the Latin culture. While the Celtic group that would become the Gauls had actively participated in the Bronze and Iron Age European markets under earlier culture groups, it was really the Latin culture that pushed the Gauls into a period of domination of Central Europe. At the time of the development of the Latin culture, roughly 450 BCE, the Gauls had inhabited all of Gaul proper for centuries. However, with the spread of the Latin culture, we see a corresponding spread of Gaelic influence across Europe. The culture quickly spread its influence to the Etruscan northern border within Italy, into Hungary, into Germany, and essentially across most of Central Europe. Even coming into contact with the Greeks in the Balkans, and eventually leading to the establishment of a unique Celtic group in Anatolia. I should note here that while I am referring to the Gauls as a single unit, this is mostly for convenience. The Gauls were a perpetually divided people. They almost never formed a singular political unit, instead preferring to remain split into different tribes who all ruled over portions of Gaelic land. While these tribes were almost the same culturally and religiously, they were separate political units who would not hesitate to raid and wage war against one another. In a way, it's actually very similar to the Greek idea of city-states. Each Greek city had its own independent territory and even warred against one another, but they were culturally and religiously very similar. The Gauls were the exact same, so just keep that in mind when I use the term Gaul. I know that was a very brief overview of Gaelish culture prior to its encounter with Rome, but there will be a future series that will go into more depth with Celtic peoples, so we will cover that in more detail during that series. For now, let's focus on those Gaulish tribes that Rome would come into conflict with in the 4th century BCE. Now, as already mentioned, in roughly 390 BCE, the Gauls began a massive push into northern Italy. Diodorus Sicolus tells us that the Gauls, quote, who had their homes beyond the Alps, streamed through the passes in great strength, and seized the territory that lay between the Apennine Mountains and the Alps, end quote. Now, of course, we should keep in mind that Diodorus was writing some four centuries after the events in question, so we should certainly take his comments with a bit of skepticism. But he does seem to be mostly correct here. There seems to be four main tribes that came into northern Italy at this time. The Boi, the Sinwans, the Lingonans, and the Kiniomani. We don't know for sure what drove the migration. It could have been something to do with the climate, competition with other tribes, or maybe they just wanted to. Whatever the case, we know that these four tribes, along with a few other minor tribes, pushed into northern Italy, where they quickly encountered the Etruscans. For now, the Lingonans and the Kiniomani are mostly relegated to the back pages of history. 
It seems as though the boy and the sign ones were the main driving force in this first wave of migration, and that the other two just sort of tagged along. This kind of makes sense when you consider that both the boy and the sign ones were two of the largest Gaelish tribes, big enough that this invasion force wasn't even the entirety of their people. We know for a fact that the sign ones left a good portion of their population back home in central Gaul or France, as their king would come into conflict with Caesar during his conquests. The boy were even more widespread, with a population in central Gaul and on the Danube in northern Austria. Together, the four tribes, plus whatever other smaller tribes or peoples chose to join along the way, pushed into the Po Valley. Near uniformly among our ancient sources, the Gauls are described as having waged a series of wars against the Etruscans, where they not only took territory, but also forced the Etruscans living within the newly conquered territory to either leave or face slavery, or, of course, the sword. However, the archaeological evidence contradicts much of these accounts. While there can be no doubt that the Gauls waged a war against the native Italian populations, Etruscans included, our archaeological evidence actually suggests that the people living in these newly conquered towns and cities continued to live their lives in much the same way as they had previously. We still see the creation of distinctly Etruscan art and artifacts, even after the conquest by the Gauls, and it seems as though the Gauls simply intermarried with and joined the native population. In any case, by the end of 395 BCE, the Gauls had successfully carved out a piece of northern Italy for their own, and settled down roughly like this, with the boy and the sign ones, the two largest tribes, taking the portions of land closest to their most powerful rivals, the Etruscans and the Romans, and the smaller tribes taking the pieces of land further away from those borders. Now it may seem like I'm not going into much detail here, and that's because I'm not. Not because I don't want to, but because we just don't have much of a record of what happened in this first taste of war between the Italians and the Gauls. We basically rely on the archaeological record, which essentially just shows the Gauls appearing in these established cities, along with a few offhand mentions of this migration by sources such as Livy, Polybius, and Diogenes. Sadly, this is another event or series of events that are lost to history because of the subject of our next video the Gaelic sack of Rome in 387 BCE. The Gauls, well, really a small portion of the Gauls, had successfully carved out their own portion of northern Italy. They had beaten back the Etruscans, the Umbrians, and now they were about to come into conflict with the new powerhouse of Italy, the Romans. Could the Gauls overcome the Roman resistance? Well, considering I keep talking about this sack of Rome, I think you can probably guess the outcome. But what actually happened during the sack of Rome? What was lost? Why were the Romans defeated? And how did they recover? Join me next time as we attempt to find out. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I hope this all made sense. We are really lacking on sources for this period, and we just sort of have to piece together what we do have. Hopefully I did a good enough job. I again want to apologize for missing uploads over the past couple weeks. I've been pretty sick, and I've only just now got to the point where I can actually record again. I also apologize that this video is shorter than normal, but I'm just now getting back into the swing of things and didn't want to overdo it. If you want some more information on everything that's been going on, check out the video in the description to get a better idea. I appreciate you all hanging in there and supporting me, it means the world. Uh, if you have any comments or questions on the video or believe I made a mistake, please comment down below and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, it really helps the channel out. Peace.